everyone, my name is Miss Hu and I am a physics teacher. In this video, we're going to do an activity to study the motion of an object moving down a ramp. And we're going to be using a software to obtain a motion graph formed from this motion. So I've chosen this background for my video because if I take the video at any other spot in my house, um, that's just too much clutter. So you're going to get distracted by all the books and the stuff I have in the background. We want to keep the background as clear as possible so that it makes it easier for us to observe the object that's actually in motion in this video. Here are the apparatus and materials you will need to take the video of this activity. You will need an object that's able to slide down the ramp. For example, you could use a small ping pong ball or in my case, I'm going to use a toy car. You would also need a surface that you can place at an incline that acts as the ramp. In my case, I do have a piece of foam board which is left over from an old craft which I never completed. But since it's already cut up into a very nice shape and size, I am going to use this as my ramp to let the object slide down. Now, if you don't have a foam board like this, you can also use a meter rule. As long as it's something that's flat and long enough for the object to slide down. If all else fails, you can also just place the rolling object on the edge of your table and lift the table up at a slight incline so that the object can slide on the table. However, if you're doing that, please be safe. Make sure that you have everything cleared off the table so nothing falls off and make sure everyone's feet is clear so that when you place the table back down, you don't pinch anyone's feet, including your own, by mistake. Safety first, guys. Now, you would also need a measuring tape or a meter rule because you would need to measure out the length of that ramp. If you're using your table surface or something that's way too long, then what you need to do is make clear markings on the side to show the length of the ramp. This is important for the tracker software as you will see later. To make sure that the motion video is effective, try to get a length that's quite long. Don't use a length like 10 or 20 centimeters. Try to get a minimum of 50 centimeters. You don't have to go very long. Of course, the longer the length, the better. But since we're doing this at home, you can keep it to a maximum length of about one meter. So in my case, my foam board has a length of 75 centimeters. Now, actually, it's possible for me to just use the entire length of 75 centimeters uh, as is for the tracker software. Now, I know that some of you may have a length that's not so easy to measure and you're wondering, okay, then what do I have to work with odd numbers? No. Say for example now I want to stick to a length of 50 centimeters for the tracker software. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a marking on the side of the board so that it's very clear and visible in the video. Then I'm going to measure out a length of 50 centimeters. So I've already measured out 50 centimeters, and this is the second marking, which is where 50 centimeters is measured from the original point. So I'm making this marking on the side of the board so that it's very visible to the camera. If you don't want to make a marking on your board or your table, what you can do is you can mark the spot with masking tape, which you can remove easily later. The important thing is that these markings must be visible on the video so that it's easier for you to use the tracker software to create the motion graph. These markings are important because this is where we're going to indicate the length in the tracker software. Taking the motion video for the object rolling down the incline is really easy. We can probably do this in just one take. It doesn't matter the angle of the incline. You can go quite low or it can go quite high. It doesn't matter as long as the object is able to roll down the incline. I'm going to place it somewhere in the middle over here and we're going to place the object at the top of the slope. Try to keep the object behind the marking that we have made and all we do is we just let go. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to use the tracker software to create a motion graph based on the object that's moving in your video. 
So if you haven't already opened your tracker software, open it. So as you can see, I have my tracker software open. So the first thing we're going to do is to open the video that we have captured of the object moving down the inclined plane. In this case, this is my video, uh, the second one to two. This contains the video of my toy car moving down the ramp. Now, my video is quite large because this was the raw video I took to make this video um, for you guys to watch. If your video is a lot shorter, it will take much shorter time uh, to load. So it should load uh, much more quickly. In my case, because this is quite a long video, it's going to take some time. So if your video takes just as long as this to load, you know, just wait it out. Can't do anything else except wait, right? Yay, it's loaded! So like I mentioned, this video is really quite long. Like I said, it's the raw video, which I talk a lot here. We don't need to watch all of this. So let's get straight to the section where we see the car sliding down the ramp. So in my video, it's quite late over here, somewhere around here. The time, yeah, it's somewhere around here. Yeah, so let me just double check. Yep, it's around here. So we need to find the section of the video where you can actually see the object moving down the ramp. I'm going to go back up to the point of release. By the way, if you're wondering how to, you know, um, move forward and backward in a video, you can use these. This is to play. Um, this is going to go straight to the beginning. So these step back and step forward. It allows you to move frame by frame forward or backwards in the video. So at 3569, this is where we're going to start checking or rather start tracking the motion of the car. Can you see this black arrow up here? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag it to 3569 because that's where we want to observe the start of the motion. Three, five, six, nine. Whoops. Three, okay, about three, five, seven, zero. Yep, give or take. So this first black triangle marks the beginning of when we're going to start tracking the motion of our object. The second black triangle should be the end point in this video which is the end of the motion that we want to track. So that should be roughly about around here, 3591. Ooh, can you see the car? Yeah, cool. So that's 3591. So I'm going to drag this over to roughly around there. Cool. Okay, so now, the um, of course, it's an easier way you can actually just click here so you can actually key in the start number and end number here instead of dragging uh, like i did but uh, either way works so that's our start and end frame okay what we need to do next is we need to indicate the length of the track that we are using so remember earlier i said make sure that you make markings on the side that's visible in the video so as you can see in my video i've got my start point and my end point here and the length from here to here is 50 centimeters. So how are we going to mark out that length is by clicking on this icon. Can you see this one? Show how to create calibration tools. We're gonna to click on that. Click on new calibration stick. Okay, so it does say here, shift click to mark N1. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the shift button and you can see how the cursor has changed to this little square cursor. And we're going to click on that first point. And you can see a blue icon has been placed right on the very first point that we want to indicate. And it does say here, shift click to mark N2. So I'm going to press the shift button again, and we're going to click on this second point. And you can see that a blue line has been drawn between the two markings. It is indicated here, uh, 700.9 meters. Now, that's obviously not the length of my ramp. So I'm going to key in the length 
based on the measurements that I have made, which if you remember was 50 centimeters, or if we convert it to meters, it's 0 0.5 meters. So I'm going to key that in 0 0.5 meters and we press enter. So this is the length that we have indicated in our video. Next, click on this icon, which is the coordinate axis, and we're going to drag. How you drag is using your left mouse button. You click and drag the middle point here up to whether it's here or here. It doesn't really matter because what we want to do is we want to rotate this axis to match this direction. So click anywhere along this purple line with your left mouse button, click and hold and drag it until you get the purple line rotated to match this direction. So once it's at the correct position, let go of the left mouse button. So this is to indicate that this is actually our X axis. Instead of keeping it as the this way, you know, Ultraman style, we, we want to rotate it so that we get a more accurate motion graph. Okay, so once this has been indicated, what we want to do next is we want to start tracking that motion. We can hide this purple axis by clicking once again on that icon and that disappears. It just disappears from view, it's actually still there. So what we want to do now is we want to start tracking the motion of this object down the ramp. Now, what I did was I clicked on this black triangle here. This will jump to the beginning of the point which we have indicated here. It won't jump to the beginning of the video. So if you remember, the black triangles here are to indicate the start and end point of where we want to track the motion in the video. By clicking on this icon, it will jump to the first point that we have indicated on our timeline. So you can see that the car is now at the top of the ramp. Now you need to understand this software doesn't actually track the object's movement automatically because there's too many things moving on here. We need to inform the software how the object is moving and track the motion based on the points we have selected. So click on create and there's a lot of options here. Just click on point mass and you'll see that mass A automatically appears. Now you can type in the mass of the object, but we're going to leave it as one kilogram because we're not actually going to calculate things like energy or momentum. We just want to track its motion. So leaving it as one kilogram is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do now is we are going to start marking the movement of the object. So you can see here it says shift click to mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my shift button and this time I'm going to click on the back wheel because the back wheel is in line with the starting point. So which means that throughout the entire motion, I'm going to click on the back wheel. So I'm going to click. Now, can you see how the moment I click on the back wheel, there's actually a little red icon that has uh, been made on this video. Yeah, it's not so visible that it's actually moved in the next step. So I'm going to click again. You can see now there's actually zero and one and the car has moved slightly. Now, what happens here is the moment you have made that red marking, it actually jumps to the next frame. And what you need to do is just need to click on the movement of that object based on that new frame. So you can see how now it's really getting spaced out, right? Because the car is moving faster. So just shift, click, and then it jumps to the next frame. And then again, shift, click, it jumps to the next frame. Shift, click. And all the way until we reach the end of the movement. Okay, so we don't need to click this last one because the car has already moved beyond our final point. You should have noticed that as I was clicking, every frame, can you see how this graph automatically appears? And this is the motion graph that's being charted based on the motion of the object that we have input. So this graph is showing us the displacement over time of this object. And it's a beautiful curved graph, as you can see. If we want to export this graph, just Put your mouse cursor within this graph, right click, 
and you can click on snapshot and snapshot gives us a screenshot of that particular graph if you want to have a look at the other kinds of motion graphs that are generated from this motion click on this x over here and you can see a lot of options and you can just click on any of these options and you can take a look at how the motion graph is charted so this shows us the uh, velocity x this is the velocity magnitude there's even acceleration now one thing i did notice when i tried to use the software on the motion is that the uh, velocity and acceleration graphs were not quite what i expected so as you can see here the acceleration seems to be increasing and decreasing at a very erratic rate which is unusual because if we look at the motion of the object moving down the ramp by right it should be a constant acceleration for the velocity it is an increasing velocity it is a bit unusual towards the top because by right it should be an increasing velocity at a constant rate we can see in the middle that the velocity is increasing at a constant rate but towards the end it got kind of weird I believe that it got kind of weird because maybe my board wasn't completely flat and maybe there were some bumps along the way that the car went through that, you know, it's not visible to the human eye. So it doesn't mean that the motion is wrong. It just means that there are other factors that could have influenced the movement of this toy car as it went down the ramp. Never mind, I'm just going to take a snapshot of this as well. For the acceleration, even though the acceleration doesn't look quite correct, uh, never mind, we're just going to take it as this. But for your information, it was supposed to be constant acceleration. So now we've got our three snapshots, which is of our velocity. Hold on, let me move it. So now we've got our three snapshots. Let me just rearrange this. Uh, this is our displacement time, velocity time, as well as acceleration time. So although the velocity time and acceleration time is not quite what we expect, you know what, um, there are other factors at play here probably. But the important thing here is that we managed to obtain motion graphs based on the video that we have taken of our object moving down the incline. So this is how you use the tracker software to track the motion of the object moving in a video that we have taken. A shout out to the developers of the tracker software. Thank you guys so much for creating this amazing software, which is free for everyone to use. That's going to make it so much better and easier for physics students to study motion. So now that you know how to use a tracker software, you can make many more motion videos of your own and use the software to create a motion graph for those corresponding motions. For example, you can use the tracker software to check the motions of videos of a basketball bouncing, of an object falling off the edge of a table, or even a video of you throwing an object up and catching it. Don't forget to click like and hit subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and have fun!